Well, hello there, and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well and having a beautiful day. Now, let me just settle myself down so I can have a quick chat with you. All right, guys, so welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to see you guys and even though I cannot see you directly I know I'm speaking to all of my friends so this week we will be starting our Christmas quilt along so along whatever category makes you happy I did post on my community page but I will repost it just so that you can see it and also you've got this video to remind you now a few things just to get it all out so that we all know exactly what's happening so it's a Christmas quilt along and we are starting today I'm going to be giving you two blocks each week and every block you'll be making two okay but I'll put all of the details again excuse me i'll put all the details again in the community page as i'm uploading this video and i will tag this video as well so that you are quite clear on the instructions or to follow along per se all right we will be making 13 blocks all together so the quilt along will run for six weeks so all the blocks will be um given to you within six weeks all right two blocks a week and each block is twice okay so you're making two blocks however the 13th block so we're making six star christmas stars and the 13th block is an easy to piece block that is repeated throughout the quilt up so that is the block number 13 and i will give you that block towards the end okay um what i would say um for those of you that are taking part i did say i did ask for you to um, leave me your name or a thumbs up. What I would like to do, which I think will be easier, is, and I'm saying this because of the previous quilt along, I felt there was so much juggling around for myself and um, a lot of people who were not taking part in the quilt along and who are not really subscribers, so to say, but not really part of the subscribers count for Crafty. Those people were, and that is not an issue. It's just that what it means that is that if my subscribers uh, are not getting the pattern immediately, then it's, it's problematic because people who are following along and who are the subscribers, I would, would, would prefer they get them first. So if you don't mind to avoid others getting it before you all right can you please just go onto crafty quilting store and i will put the link in the description box as well which is my shopify um store and all you need to do is subscribe and just say on the subscription christmas quilt along now do bear in mind that i am not one um to send out you know lots of um publicity or things that will junk up your um, inbox. I, I don't do that. I probably send um, sales out probably three times for the year. So probably Christmas, New Year and probably Easter. So don't be worried about that. It's only me. I haven't got a marketing company, so I really don't have time to focus on that. But if I do do a sale, it's probably three times a year and for the seasons that I just um, told you. All right, so just send me your email address and say on the email address, so just subscribe. When you subscribe, your name will come up and obviously you'll have to enter your email address and then say on that sort of subscription or just send me a message, whatever's the easiest for you. And just say that, you know, quilt along, Christmas quilt along so that I know. So it's easier then for me to just simply send the quilt along to all of the people who are actually taking part and for the others then the they will just have to buy the pattern. So it's entirely down to you. All right. Um, the pattern will also go free to the members but members I already have your details so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, so that's it basically. Um, so I'm going to show you the first, um, block now. And remember we're making two. So this is your first block. So this is a point set here. Why do I always do that? This is block is called the point set here. Um, Christmas block. I think it's very beautiful. Okay. It's really, really lovely. Easy to piece. 
and I don't think you will go wrong with it. The pattern will be in the description box down below for those of you who want to buy the pattern and for those of you who are taking part in the quilt along, as I said, just email me or send me your email address, quilt along, and I will then forward that to you, which is so much more easier. And I think one of the reasons why I decided to do it this way is because when I did upload the previous quilt along, as I said, those of you who were not taking part or, or people who were new to the channel or, you know, were just downloading and I have many times had to, you know, spend time just sending it to my subscribers who didn't get the chance to actually get the um, quilts, the, the quilt blocks. So it was a little bit problematic on my side. I had to keep going back in and out of that. And someone actually said to me, who are you? And I was kind of moaning at me and I don't want people moaning at me. So just to avoid, you know, the confusion, I prefer to do it this way. So it's easier for everybody, including me. Um, so that's it. So I hope you take part and um, I'll show you my, I put a picture in of my um, old Christmas quilt. I say old, I mean, I only use it once a year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since I've made it, I think I've made it two years ago now, so it only comes out at Christmas time, but I wanted a new one, you know, so, um, so we should finish this well, well, well before Christmas. All right, guys, so this is it once again. I look forward to hearing your feedback, what you think of the poinsettia um, Christmas block, and I shall see you in the video. So let's get started right now. <laughs> Okay, so here is your bundle of Fat Quarter. This is the one I'm using. Mine is by Jolly and Joy. And I have a bundle of eight pieces here. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. I haven't opened it up, to be honest. I left it to do it with you. I chose it based on how it actually looked. So, we do need different combinations of greens for the particular block as well as red. So it has a nice beautiful floral here, which is really lovely. The block we're making is poinsettias, as I told you. So we're gonna start with that one. This one has got some beautiful stars on it, as well as this one here, which is lovely. It's a nice red, nice beautiful Christmas red. I love this light color here. Not sure if I'll use this. Um, as it's very light but we'll see as well as this different shade of green okay so as you can see different shades here as well this one is slightly darker as well or, yeah slightly darker shades all three of them which is beautiful which is what I want as well as this sort of look with this particular one not sure about this one you see it um, only because of the lines and the reason why I'm saying that is because if you are going to use that you're going to make sure that every line will line up obviously it's got little grid lines on on it so um, just be careful of that so I'm not sure if I'm going to use this one just as yet or if I do I'm going to, have to make sure it lines up properly and I've got a beautiful other Christmas one that says joy light hope peace etc on there so very much a very good Christmas collection. Again, different shades of red for all of them, which is again, um, light, darks, mediums. All right, and plus you get these two extra here as well. Now you also need some background. I am in two minds as to which particular background I am going to use, but I've got quite a number here of um, beautiful um, crisp white for my background. I was considering using a particular pattern, a particular Christmas pattern. I, I considered this, um, but I felt it might be a little bit too busy and it's kind of um, textured uh, because I can feel the, the, it's sparkly as well. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it's sparkly, but it's, it's a nice one. I may use it for something else. Um, it's a different shade of white, but at the end of the day, it is still white, all right? But I'll decide. I'll, I'll most likely cut my background last so I can decide. Moving on, we're going to be using um, the light reds and the medium reds. So I'm going to leave this one to the side for the moment until I decide if I'm going to use it. It's a beautiful color. I'm just concerned about 
the stripes of gold on it um, so it's a bit of a tartan um, sort of feel Christmas traditional feel for this one here which is nice I'm not saying it's not nice but um, yeah just gonna have to use it wisely so that we use the fabric itself the fat coat itself appropriately and not waste it but for now I'm going to be using these two as well as all shades of the green so we're going to get started now on making up i've done all of the cuts all of the details would be in the pattern all right as mentioned before just as a reminder so we're going to start off with our large rectangle here of the lights or the medium greens and um, my background and i'm going to sew these two together and then i'm going to do the same for my dark green strip here as well as my background and sew these two together also so i'm going to do all of my stitching at the same time okay once i have done with those the next thing i'm going to do is using my dark reds and my medium reds i'm going to do a stitch and flip okay so what i have done here these ones are not stitched on as yet but I have left the marked one here in position of the first marked one just so that I know where it's going. So what direction I am stitching in. It's still connected here. I haven't broken the chain. So because this is my reminder, I'm just going to start at this point here and work my way down in the same order and in the same angular um direction so that i don't get it mixed up all right i've done the same for the first ones so just make sure you do that i put them on my mat here so that it's easier to just bring everything over and sit and chain piece all of the connecting squares right make sure that you simply chain stitch all of your pieces like i am doing here and i've just used my line to guide me as normal and you're just going to simply take your time and sew all right so now that i have chain piece all of my stitch and flips all right ensuring that it's all in the correct order and um, we're just going to trim them off as normal okay let me separate these now this block comes together very quickly and I don't think you will be long making it at all. As long as you're organized with all the things that you need to do, you should, you should be okay. So again, you're just going to cut a quarter inch away from the edge of your mark line, which turned into your stitch line, okay? And again, we're going to turn it upside down. Just re be reminded of the right end that you are trimming away. It should look in that particular sort of construct. So again, just make sure you turn it down so that the white strip behind goes towards the dark. We just don't want it peeping through. I mean, if you're not bothered by it, by all means, do what makes you happy. You can always turn it wrong side up and seam roll or finger press it. Whatever makes you happy, guys. I am easy. Whatever works. I am not too fussed about what I use my fingers, whatever is on hand to make the project go by quickly. But as I said, 
just remember not to stretch it very important okay um, and also as I am here talking about cut stretching the fabric ensure that when you are cutting you are cutting opposite the salvage yeah remember that because if you don't do that you will find that your blocks may come out a little bit on the stretchy side we don't want that to happen because that allows the blocks not to lay flat once you have sewn it together in your quilt top so always cut opposite the selvage just to uh, make sure that you're cutting on the right grain the correct grain and it does not give you a stretchy finish so again I'm bringing it wrong side up and just pressing Now I'm laying them this way so that you can clearly see that there is a difference in the layout of adding the fabric onto the red. And I've separated them as I just told you. Okay. I do enjoy actually using the seam roller because it just it makes it so lovely and flat look at that you don't really need the iron at this point because the ironing itself can cause the block to literally um, start to stretch so just not to worry about that at the moment okay so the only thing we haven't really stitched together is our center block all right so it's now it's time to start building this we still need to do some stitching so one of the first thing I'm going to move this aside so on my right here is um, my sort of dark reds and my medium reds here or my lights whatever it doesn't really matter too much we just want to see a different shade of the red which you get in Christmas reds anyway so I am confident that you will achieve that without any issue all right so to start sewing these rectangles you can get a smaller rectangle and a larger rectangle and all you really need to do a King Jackson has seen somebody so he is barking Alright, so I've chained piece all of these squares together with the rectangles or the rectangles together. Now the next is to put these together now. So as usual, I'm just going to finger press and lay like so. Okay, with this ensuring again that you get the dark on the green. Okay, so I'm going to do that later on. But for now, the next objective is to put these together. Now the importance here of me laying them this way is so that you can see how easily you fit these together so that you don't get it mixed up all right so organization here is the key so we have the these two together like so so you can see that coming together again like that like so and you see how easy that is to line them up so that you go, don't get it all confused. What we're looking for is an arrow movement. So all we're going to do, and then I have my darker reds here and my mediums or lighter reds on this side. All right, and then you're going to do them front sides together, front sides together, and we're simply just going to do a chain stitch yet again, and it's 
after that just put the block together all right so now that all my components are ready I'm just going to give these a little bit of a press so that it comes together really quickly Now do bear in mind that when you fold the smaller rectangle on the larger um, to hide the dark here, um, you will get some on the white, but some of it is not is unavoidable, all right? You just gotta choose which one you're happy with, whether the smaller fits at the back showing or the larger. All right, so now that all those components are press down where's my tray what I am going to do now is put it back onto the mat and build a block so you need your center square and you're going to be starting with your your arrow <laughs> All right, and we want the arrow coming towards the center. All right, so the, the point set here, block, all the arrow coming towards the center. Okay, I see I have a little bit of a trimming that needs to be done here, so I'm going to take care of that now. Just trim that off just to make sure it's nice and rectangle. It goes to the end. I think I have slightly stretch this one so I'm just going to trim it up I don't like doing that before but just be cautious if you've got to end up trimming some of yours as well all right so again arrow towards the center I'm going to trim that one off I can see a little bit of the thread sticking out and that tends to annoy me a little bit so there I just hate when the machine cuts the thread you can actually see it sticking out there it's a bit annoying to be honest and unavoidable you know but it is what it is again so arrow coming towards the middle now Christmas is all about stars isn't it so it is what it is <laughs> yeah right? so if you're not into stars unfortunately that is what happens when you make a Christmas project you do get lots of stars all right so the square goes towards there to there and there so you must see that sort of four patch square around it and this is your poinsettia Christmas block it looks really beautiful I love it now again we will sew this together as a nine patch very easy to sew together so you'll sew these three then these three and these three and then you just front sides together and the block is complete so I'm going to do that now and then I'll present the block to you all right so the block is ready so I'm just pressing at the back I'm just going to turn my little iron on here because it steams up very quickly I am just pressing remember the difference between pressing and ironing pressing is just pressing the seams down so that they're flat okay so I would urge you to do this at all stage when you're making your blocks so that um, it is nice and flat and by the time you get to piecing the block together you, you know you don't have to go through that hassle anymore all right so just pressing it down and I am adding some steam here I'll take that off now and I'm going to turn it over to the front and first I'm just going to use a cool iron and I'm just going to open up all of the seams here because there is quite a lot okay and I'm not pressing because I don't want to stretch it so I'm just not pressing too hard I'm just kind of opening up the block you will get some bias edges so be careful not to take the block out of shape so now I'm going to add a bit of steam now just to press it down nicely 
and it's lovely and flat. I hate saying the word lovely and flat. But you do it, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to turn myself off every time I say it. Every time. So that it stops. Alright, and this is your poinsettia first Christmas block. So you need to make two of these. Alright? Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm so excited about this Christmas so along all right guys so that's it for now if you did enjoy this tutorial do like and subscribe for more share the video around and do leave a feedback let me know what you think of the first christmas vlog remember we need to make two all right so bye for now happy quilting and i'll definitely see you in a couple of days time <laughs> happy quilting guys bye